Hello everyone! Should you panic or worry about inflation? Let's see what Paul Krugman has to say about it. The title goes, his story says, don't panic about inflation. Hmm. Interesting. Let's go on with the article. So, Paul Krugman uh, wrote this. So, <clears throat> he mentions this article that looked at uh, six surges in inflation since World War II. And uh, the article argued persuasively that current events don't look anything like the 1970s. Like, are you kidding me? If you measure the CPI with the same formula that they measured it before 1980, inflation right now would be 14%. Like I, I checked uh, today in another uh, article. It would be 14%. And uh, what the government admits to is uh, actually Peter Schiff. Uh, I, I listened to a podcast from Peter Schiff, if I'm not mistaken, that if we had used the formula from 19 before 1980s, uh, which you can find on shadow shadow stats, inflation would be 14%, not 6.2%. Yeah, so it. Inflation today is nothing like the 1970s. Like, I don't care if it's like the 1970s or like the 1946 to 48. Inflation is inflation. Okay, so let's uh, continue with the article. Because I did not read it, so we'll see what Krugman has about... What, what Krugman, Krugman has to say about inflation. Okay. So Wednesday, Consumer Report was ugly inflation is running considerably hotter than many people myself included expected so finally uh, he kind of admits that in inflation is running hotter than than expected is it transitory or is it permanent i i tend to believe that inflation is permanent but let me know in the comments what do you think uh, okay, but nothing about it con contradicted uh, CEA's analysis. On the contrary, the similarity to early post-war inflation looks stronger than ever. What we are experiencing now is a lot more like 1947 than like 1979. Again, who cares? <laughs> inflation is inflation. It still destroys the purchasing power of the poor and middle class. But, oh, you know, that the propaganda is that uh, I inflation is, is just, a, it's just a rich people problem. In no way, shape of, or form is a poor people problem. <laughs> okay. And here's what you need to know about the... Do, do we really care? Okay, let's, for the sake of it, let's read it. Um, it was a one-time event. Oh, oh, so all my savings went to zero in a two-year period. It, but it, it was only one time. <laughs> the biggest mistake policymakers made in response to that inflation surge was, was failing to appreciate its transit. To okay, here it is. <laughs> Here it is. It, it it was transitory. Yes, just like it is right now, it's transitory. Because inflation was ceasing to be a problem. And in doing so helped bring on the recession of 1948 to 49. Well, if I'm not mistaken, during the war and after the war, what was the the Federal Reserve um, rate? You know the, the the central bank. At at what did they pin the the rates to for for the bonds? Close to zero or or 
Uh, am I missing something? Because uh, I believe it was close to zero. So the price report uh, looked very much like the classic story of inflation resulting from an overheated economy in which too much money is chasing too few goods. Yes. Stop printing money, raise interest rates and allow businesses to produce more goods and services, meaning eliminate regulation or legislation, whatever, you know, you know the drill. Earlier this year, the rise in prices had a narrow base, being driven largely by food, energy, used cars and services like a... Th that's pretty much uh, bullshit, because in the last report, uh, the Fed, I think, or whoever released the numbers, said that like 80% of, of the members included in the definition of the CPI had significant inflation, not only food, energy and used cars. One caveat to this story is that overall demand in the United States actually doesn't look all that high. Oh really? Real GDP, which is probably, real GDP is going down for sure. I mean, you have inflation at 6%, even though they do not use inflation to calculate real GDP. They use uh, something, I think, price deflator, which is a lot lower than the CPI. That's how they get uh, really good uh, GDP number, real GDP numbers because they don't actually use the, the CPI. They, they use another mechanism. So real GDP is still about 2% below what we would have expected the economy's capacity to be if the pandemic hadn't happened. Look, it's not the pandemic's problem is the government response to the pandemic that slowed down the economy. But you know how to spin it. Demand has been skewed, consumers buying fewer services but more goods than before, of course, because you, I mean, it could be true, I see it, because the government forces people to stay inside. So they need to order goods. They don't have access to services because the government does not allow them so much liberty. How dare they? How dare they? Just putting a strain on ports, trucking, warehouses and more. The supply chain issues has, has been exacerbated by a global shortage of semiconductor chips because of course not only the United States government responded badly to the pandemic, uh, the whole world responded badly, closing down the economy, leading to global shortages. But again, they do not blame the government, <laughs> the state, they blame the pandemic, which is stupid. Jobs have been rare, have rarely been plentiful for those who want them. Oh, of course, people are not going back to work because the government is, is just giving them free money to stay home. Why, why should you go to work at McDonald's if you get more just by staying home and watching Netflix all day? Oh, here it is. And contrary to the cliche, <laughs> inflation isn't falling most heavily on the poor. What? Like, if you are poor, the percentage you are, the percentage of your income that you are spending on goods, especially food, is higher there's something that, 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 that somebody that has an income of 
above a million dollars a year for somebody that's in the top 1% or 0.1%. They're gonna spend for basic needs pretty much the same. But for the lower income people, the percentage of their total income is higher for goods and services that they need to pay for. But that's just a cliche according to Krugman. <laughs> so what can 1946 to 48 teach us about inflation? So he's basically saying that we're gonna have two or three years of inflation. Surely poor people are, are gonna do just fine. <laughs> Because if you actually look at history, wages are tracking behind inflation. But of course, that's just a cliche. Then as now, there was a surge in consumer spending as family rushed to buy the goods that had been unavailable in wartime. Then as now, it took time for the economy to adjust to a big shift in demand. In the 1940s, the shift from military to civilian needs then as now the result was inflation which in 1947 just just stop printing money stop printing money and there's no inflation it's that simple 20 <laughs> percent yes nor was this inflation restricted to food and energy wage growth in manufacturing which was much more representative of the economy as a whole in 1947 than it is now. It peaked at 22%. Oh, let's, and let's not forget that uh, back uh, back in the day, like uh, in the World War II, the, the dollar was uh, backed by gold. What's the dollar backed by now? Nothing faith in the government and they are a, a lot of people in the government are big proponents of MMT so keep that in mind what then does history teach us about the current inflation spike asks Krugman a lesson is that brief episode, episodes of overheating don't necessarily lead to 1970s type stagflation again we don't care if it's 1970s or 1946 inflation is inflation and it hurts the poor and middle class it's that simple okay so 1946 didn't cause long-term inflation and either did the other episodes that most resemble where we are now world War one and the korean war and we really should have some patience yes just lower your expectations have patience naive peasant plebe <laughs> just have some patience inflation will come down once your savings are are gone <laughs> basically given what happened in the 1940s pronouncements that inflation can be transitory because it has persisted for a number of months are just oh it's just silly to think that inflation is bad it's good for <laughs> I mean the mental gymnastics on this guy and for what is worth the bond market is in effect predicting a temporary bump in inflation not a permanent rise really yields in the inflation protected bonds maturing over the next couple of years are st strongly negative implying that investors is expect rapid price rises in the near term but longer term market expectations of inflation have remained stable. So these bonds that dare I say are monetized by the government, not investor, invest, investors. Yes. Take out the, the um, yeah, take out the Fed from the equation and let's see who, who's going to buy the bonds. <laughs> Let's see where the yields would be if the Fed stops buying uh, bonds. 
I would say uh, yields will rise considerably higher. Another lesson which is extremely relevant right now is that inflation spurt is no reason to cancel long-term investment plans. So basically just spend, 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 spend more on infrastructure. <laughs> the inflation surge of the 1940s was, fo was followed by an epic period of public investment, exactly. So more infrastructure spending as though the United States the, does not have enough highways. I mean, I, I could see uh, huge economic benefits with infrastructure spending if it's done somewhere in Romania. That's where I'm from. It would be extremely beneficial because Romania doesn't have a single highway that goes from the eastern, most eastern point to the most western point. And that would be a really nice highway to have. But, but in the United States, they have enough, enough interstate highway, highways that investment didn't reignite inflation. If anything, by improving America's logistics, it probably helped keep inflation down. So again, the, the, the problem in America right now is not that they don't have enough uh, highways. Is The problem is that the, the legislation is keeping drivers, truck drivers, out of the economy. Because, oh, you need to have the newest uh, engine because uh, it doesn't have it, it must not pollute uh, this much or that much and guess what uh, those engines are so choked with so many anti-pollution systems that they break down very easily and they are extremely expensive to repair and truck drivers are choosing to abandon their their jobs that's the problem. Just eliminate some legislation, stop printing money, and inflation will come down. It's that simple. The same can, can be said of the this president <coughs> administration spending proposals. Yes, spending. So basically, from from uh, investment. We, we jump to, yeah, from, from his investment plans, we are jumping straight to spending. <laughs> I mean, in your private life, uh, I hope you are having a good knowledge in the difference between spending and investing. <laughs> so yes, that was an ugly inflation report. And guess what, Krugman? I'm guessing there there are going we're going to have inflation reports that are going that are going to be even uglier. And again, if the CPI would be calculated just as it was before 1980, oh, it would be ugly at 14%, let me tell you. And we hope that future reports will look better. No, they will not. I just said why. <laughs> People making knee-jerk comparisons with the 1970s and screaming about stagflation are looking at the wrong history. No, they are just looking at history. There's no right or wrong history in the economic sense, of course. Not to panic. So you're telling me that in 1946, when inflation was 20%, poor people didn't give an F, right? <laughs> Dude, I, I just can't believe this guy. <laughs> uh, poor people did not panic because they had 20% inflation. That's just amazing. And again, it was said, 
let's search for poor. Current inflation isn't falling most heavily on the poor. We must protect the rich. The inflation is falling heavily on the rich, so we must bail them out with the help of the Federal Reserve and the government. Of course, that's the solution. All right, guys, this was my take on Krugman's opinion. Again, I don't think you should panic about inflation, but I do think you should take some necessary steps like buying gold, silver, and maybe some good value stocks that produce real goods and services that would probably still be wanted during a recession. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, make sure you leave a comment below, consider subscribing, give me a thumbs up so YouTube pushes this to even more people. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.